Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, along with my co-conspirator partner in crime, the Dr. Jimmy Bucciolato. Hi, everyone. Hey, now. Uh, we're going to do a quick hitter episode right now. Some breaking news out of the New York underworld. The quintessential mafia prince of New York City um, in the 20th century, Thomas Gambino, is no longer with us. He passed away um, from natural causes October 3rd this week. 2023 at the age of 94 his father was the boss of bosses carlo gambino the namesake of the gambino crime family uh until he passed away in 1976 and tommy gambino although not what you would you know was not the uh not out of central casting when you're talking about mob figures um not someone that i think if you encountered him, you might not even know he was a mob guy. Uh, but he was a big earner, and because of who his father was, he was always in very good standing. Uh, and and his father-in-law, his father-in-law was was three finger uh, Tommy Brown, uh, Tommy Lucchese, the boss of the Lucchese crime family. So, just for a couple minutes, uh, me and Jimmy want to just kind of talk a little bit about Tommy Gambino and how he was able to survived through the eras i mean you think once Gotti took over he could have because you know he kills castellano castellano's related uh to, to tommy gambino was his uncle i believe mm -hmm. and uh, Gotti could have put tommy gambino on the shelf but recognized that uh he was somebody that he, he could still benefit from and kept him in a capo spot even though he was a capo like without a crew yeah, he was involved in the uh, garment industry, and I, I I knew someone who who knew him and and said he was a perfect gentleman. To to Scott's point of he wasn't the usual suspect, that he was a really articulate um guy and and was you know did not come off as a you know kind of a, a ruffian mobster. When the chickens finally came home to roost for him with the government, he had to go do I think seven years in federal prison. He he kept his mouth shut. Um, even though he wasn't someone that um, you would think would be well equipped for a prison stay, but I guess if you're uh, Don Carlos' son, even if Don Carlos' dead, you're you're still going to be afforded a, a level of respect in there, even if you're not a tough guy. Um, but the government, when they were in the process of trying to put him in prison, they estimated his worth thirty years ago at almost a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Well, so you guy. can imagine how wealthy he is when he passed away in 2023 and he hasn't been active in 25 years plus. Yeah. A, a couple of things to, to add to that. I think one reason why Gotti didn't have an issue with him was it reminds me of the scene from the, the line from the Godfather. We know Tom, we know you're not the muscle end of the family. <laughs> I think yeah. he like, I mean, because there's surveillance footage right after the not long after the Castellano hit of Gotti and Tommy Gambino walking together. Um, and so and Gotti, we know from those uh, uh, wiretaps, he spoke highly of Tommy Gambino. He, he liked him. He didn't he, he genuinely liked him, didn't have a problem with him. And I think that went back to Gotti didn't view it as about being related to Castellano. He viewed it as Don Carlos son. You understand what you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like that, there was the reverence was because of the connection to Carlo. I think there's a there's a a tape recording of Gotti where where he's talking to his guys. I think Locasio and and Gravano, where he says conventional wisdom would say we we take Tommy Gambino down in power. He's like, I'm going the opposite direction. I'm going to beef up his crew mm -hmm. because he can be an asset for us, and we don't yeah. have to worry about him. Like you said, taking. Uh, revenge for Paul Castellano. We're going to give him more resources to make more money for us. Yeah, which which he did. And and just one other thing I'll add was I always thought this was uh, funny. Was I'm interested in the Cherry Hill Gambinos and the, their cousins with each other. Uh, the Cherry Hill Gambinos' father, Tommaso Gambino, and Carlo Gambino were Seconda Cugini second cousins. And um, when 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 the Cherry Hill Gambinos were in the news about the heroin trafficking and things like that. Um, I, I believe it was in the 90s, 
because they ended up getting busted for and they were on the run and they, they ended up getting busted uh, or they they turned themselves in for cocaine and heroin distribution somebody in the media asked the person we're talking about tom tommy gambino about that and he he denied he denied even knowing them he said well, i'm not related to them i have no idea who they are he but he was his being, father <laughs> he was being he was being disingenuous i mean yeah. he, he, they would have been third cousins so they were distant cousins but he 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 he, of course he knew who he, of course he knew who they were. I always thought that was amusing. So he walked out of prison in the spring of 2000 and really has not been active uh, since then. But uh, RIP to Tommy Gambino for Jimmy Bucciolato and Ben Behind the Glass, OG Pod, 